Ishuk, uh, I want to ask you this morning, uh, or this afternoon, sorry, what is going on as regards communications with Neffet? Don't want to use the phrase gag, but that seems to be what it is. Now all communication has to go through GIS. And if that's the way you want to do things, fine. But you're responsible for that because they report to you. GIS is in your department. So why is this change happening now as regards the process by which Neffet communicate with the public? And you're responsible for it. But why now? Is it because of what happened last Thursday in relation to information coming out from an effort meeting uh, before government made the decision? And if it is, just uh, say so. Because I have a concern, because there are at times, I believe government do make decisions and have to do the ultimate communications, but there are at times when we have to hear directly from public health experts in relation to specifics. We have a storm going on outside. With all due respect to the Minister for, for Housing, uh, I'd rather hear from Evelyn Cusack as regards the direction of that storm from Met Aaron than from the Minister for Housing, because very specific need. I say that in jest, but we're in also in the middle of a pandemic. There are specific needs as regards information that has to be communicated. And going through GIS as regards having to make media appearance is worrying from a transparency point of view. And you need to clear this up because from my perspective and from the Labour Party's perspective, the main confusion over the last week isn't from NEFID, it's from you and from government. When it came to antigen testing, there was going to be subsidies. Then all of a sudden the minister announced on television there wasn't going to be. There was a missive sent out on Tuesday last at 6.15 to schools regarding masks being mandatory. There was a U-turn on Monday because obviously I challenged you inside here as regards the legality backing for principals, and also principals in some cases were unwilling to do it. So that changed. Uh, there was changes in relation to those arriving into the country, where Aer Lingus informed the country that there was a change from a Friday to a Sunday as regards to requirements for PCR and antigen tests on arrival. You can see a pattern here. I also raised the issue in relation to EWSS, and then ministers uh, were flouting around different schemes uh, uh, until yesterday when the Minister for Social Protection gave us some information, but not all. And we now know that's not going to be fully out there until Thursday or Friday. We have the issues in relation to HEPA filters, which I agree with the previous speaker has gone on forever, and I have no understanding as to why this hasn't been put forward and dealt with. None whatsoever. Um, so Taoiseach, I want to ask you the following. Who's responsible for the change in policy of how NEFIT are to communicate with the public on specific public health issues. Why was that decided? Do you accept that it's your own ministers and their failures as regards communications you, that have created the omni shambles over the five issues that I have pointed out just in the last week alone? And finally, for those workers who are impacted so much by the changes uh, that have been brought about, the restrictions that have been brought about, those who are servicing the hospitality industry, like taxi drivers and others. What measures, bespoke measures, will be put in place in order to support them during this very difficult time? Thank you very much, Deputy Taoiseach. Could I first of all say I agree with your comments in respect of public health advice, the centrality of it and the importance of it in the global pandemic. And from the outset of this, this pandemic, when I was on the opposition benches in the immediate aftermath of the last general election, I said at the very first meeting with the public health officials, uh, I think Deputy Shortall would have been there and would have said exactly the same thing, that all of us collectively in this House must uh, accept the centrality of public health advice uh, as a guide to deal and to cope with the pandemic. And that remains my position. And it is, it is extremely important that public health advice is independent, it's transparent, uh, and is seen um, to be so. And I'm going to give this commitment, Deputy, that as long as I'm Taoiseach, there will never ever be an attempt to in any shape or form undermine the independence or transparency of public health advice. Secondly, I uh, just want to state that, and maybe I think you, you may have overstated the degree to which there's been a change. Uh, secondly, all press officers and all departments have been asked to facilitate, make sure that NEFIT spokespeople are facilitated 
in going forward to the public, to the public media um, in terms of doing interviews, making media appearances, and communicating public health advice uh, in the context of, of government policy. Uh, and just to explain to people you know, the, the rationale for the advice that, that, that is given. And what the government has decided, though, as well, is that we coordinate that then across, that we don't have six spokespeople out in the one day, as opposed to maybe two or three, uh, and that there's a synchronising, that there's a, a proper coordination. And I think that is something that I, I don't think is uh, something anybody uh, can quibble um, with. Um, and, um, and that's exactly, that's the position, Deputy. Um, and I've checked back over the weekend. Uh, nobody was stopped over the weekend, it seems to me, from what I've garnered from going on any show. Um, and uh, I just want to, because I, in good faith, said what I said on Sunday morning um, uh, at a press outing, because uh, this matters to me too. You know, I do believe in, in the independence. Now, could I say this much? Sometimes, and I just say this, reflecting on, on the last number of months, when people sometimes accuse by the government, and look, there can be, we don't always get it right, but I've come to the conclusion more often than not, mixed messaging is a good way of saying, I actually don't like the message. <laughs> and that seems to me to be the position. In the house here, from time to time, people would say, oh, you haven't done antigen testing. Well, you know what? You know and I know and everybody knows, public health advice haven't been from the earliest days, the strongest advocates of antigen. And there's a robust debate about antigen. There's actually a robust debate about ventilation. I believe we should do everything we possibly can on ventilation, and we will. But very quickly, people will move on from the public health advice and say it's government not doing this and government not doing that, when actually, you know, there's a, Thank in many occasions, it can up. be, that's the advice. And I think we all of us need to be careful that we don't fall for the inevitable human failing of always seeking to blame the messenger when actually we don't quite like the messenger. Thank you. Deputy. <coughs> uh, thanks, Taoiseach. Um, I presume you're not referring to my party there because um, oh. we have, we have, uh, we have uh, as you know, uniquely amongst opposition actually, actually supported, supported uh, the emergency measures uniquely amongst opposition parties. Uh, but, but Taoiseach, it's very hard. To, it's very hard to take it. It's very hard to take you seriously when you say the message. It's when you say the message uh, sometimes is basically lost in translation. What happened in relation to schools was not lost in translation. It was a direct contradiction. I've been raising uh, antigen tests inside here for 14 months. 14 months. Taoiseach, I am worried about the issue in relation to GIS and. Um, uh, the spokespeople from Neffet. A large percentage, a serious percentage of those are public servants. They're public servants. Some are not involved in Neffet and NIAC. Some are public servants. And I have a concern that they feel now that they need to go through GIS in order to go on radio, TV shows or print media. Can you confirm that that is not the case? They don't have to go through GIS. So, uh, Gavin Riley last weekend on Sunday did say that a member, a senior member of NEFA was meant to come on his show and then obviously was told that he, he was told it wasn't available. Time is up so you're now saying please. that that's not the case. Will you confirm to the House that anybody in NEFA who wants to appear on any show, broadcast or go on print, that they do not have to go through GIS or any spokespeople? Thank you. Yeah, I journalists should continue to contact HSE, Department of Health, to request interviews with public health officials. Okay? Um, just, to, I, just to make the point. And um, then they should notify the, 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 the grid and make sure that everyone knows who's appearing on whatever show uh, at a given time to coordinate. You need coordination, obviously, because you've, you, you have been complaining. People here have been complaining yeah, on the ministers. opposite side Please. about so many messages and so many people speaking. And that's been a common refrain. Uh, because, because of the pandemic, basically, if, we, if we're honest about it, the pandemic has necessitated very frequent interviews, commentary, and particularly with Omnicron. Let's all be clear now. You, we cannot, uh, the only reason there was a significant range and number of announcements in the last 10 days was Omicron was a big factor. Uh, let's be honest. We had to make a call in terms of travel. We had to, and then the high ra rise of Delta in terms of 5 to 11-year-olds necessitated a response from public health and a government decision in relation to 5 to 11-year-olds and masks. Uh, and these, you know, we have to move quickly at times in respect of public health advice 
on, on new developments. Omicron was one of those new developments and looks like to be the next significant uh, element in this uh, phase of the pandemic or the next phase of the pandemic probably will be the Omicron phase, which is why I said what I said at the outset here today, the absolute necessity, in my view, and importance for people to get the booster vaccine. It will really protect you in a much, to a much greater degree than you're protected now uh, against either Delta or um, Omicron. <coughs> Thank you, um, and and I, you did make the point, you have been raising antigen, but you have to be the first to admit you're not a public health expert, no more than I am. No more than I, I know you didn't, and neither am I. It is up now, there, there we go again. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's a difference of opinion on antigen testing, and there has been.